Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to Dating My Budget. My name is Nita and I'm on the journey to becoming a financial warrior with the help of zero-based budgeting, the cash envelope system and savings challenges. I'm trying to stay debt free and give myself financial options. A minute since I did a budget with me and I wanted to at least do one during the month of July, record one, but I always do my budget no matter what. Before we get into it, I wanted to share with you guys some information that I have on hand to help me with my budget breakdown. And one is at the beginning of the year, I went through wrote all the categories that I was like pretty much pre-planning either a goal or a due date. If they don't have a specific due date, I just gave the due date at the end of the year overall. Like my numbers don't change too much unless I'm giving it something extra. But to give you an example, the purge, um, the goal amount is 300. This category I'm using to help me organize at the end of the year. Uh, when I do my mask cleaning. And so uh, that's why I gave it the date end of the year. I had 11 months to save at the time that I created this tracker. I had already save ten dollars and so that left me with 290 to save and then over here i broke it down in three the amount i needed monthly by weekly or weekly however this category is getting 31 dollars. i'm snowballing the amount from holidays the purge and bank of nita instead of giving them seven eight three dollars those small amounts all year I fully funded holidays. I'm almost about to fully fund the purge. And then <clears throat> once the purge is finished, the snowball amount will go to Bank of Nita. But this helps me to kind of have my numbers already figured out. And it kind of helps me determine the priority of my sinking funds. So in this track I got from... The Budget Mom, this was from her free li free resources library. So I do this every year. This is my third year doing the cash envelope system. So it's really, really handy. And the second thing is I kind of do a cheat sheet pre-planning um, of some stuff that I know I want to either increase decrease or I, i'll say one like my wellness that one fluctuate um and that's not when i i pre-plan for the year because i spend constantly from this envelope so this number as you kind of see it kind of it changes well pretty much everything else pretty much stays the same so i have this that i do and i've <laughs> Like I said, um, this is another thing I've been doing for the three years. Let's get into the budget. So I already wrote the amount of my paycheck. I budget the lowest number at nine seventy, but I got nine nine hundred seventy seven dollars and thirty two cents. So we're just gonna bring that. <clears throat> just gonna bring that down here. For my monthly expenses, they stay in the bank. SIB stay in bank. For me, I'm a month ahead. And being a month ahead has allowed me to know my, there's a set amount that goes towards bills. And what I do, I take that amount, split it in half over my two paychecks since I'm paid bi-weekly. And constantly replenishing my bills account. My monthly expenses, that amount is three eighty, And that's another reason I don't have it written out because, like, I made it, I'm in the habit of making things as convenient as possible when it comes to my budget. So, half of three eighty is one ninety, And then my cushion has been getting $125.00. My monthly expenses and my cushion goes to two separate checking accounts, two separate banks, all that. 
Uh, well, actually, they're credit unions, two separate credit unions. And so I will use this from time to time to cover any spending or any overage. Moving on to month ahead. I am a month ahead in the bills that I cover. So these, all the bills that's included in here, I'm a month ahead in. I'm getting a a month ahead in the bills that I do not cover, which are all the other household expenses. And so I've been um, chipping away at that slowly. And so this is going to get 25. And I wanted to mention that like for me, my month ahead, my one month ahead is going to be completely is separated from being three to six months, having three, three to six months of expenses. So for me in my bills, my bills account and my savings account in that same credit union. So the checking account is constantly paying bills. And then the savings account holds my month ahead fund. And so if something happens, we have that. We'll have a whole month of expenses, no matter who pays them, that will come that, that will be holding in that one month ahead account. And I could just transfer it to cover whatever expense. So that's how that works for me. And then I already started my three to six months expenses last year and I saved the 5000 Next is Secure Auto. This is where I pay my six month premium. I am saving this in cash and it gets a total of $50. And actually I'm saving towards the premium of the 12 month premium for 2025. I was able to get a year ahead in insurance payments car insurance payment last year by overstuffing uh, this envelope. I just took the highest bill that I had and was stuffing that, you know, stuffing as though I was still paying that amount. And so that called, that allowed me to be, get a year ahead. And so, yeah, I love that. I would like to be a year ahead in all of my bills. That's like my unspoken long-term goal. But, you know, little by little. Next is HOA. Our HOA is due at the end of January of every year. But for me, it's due at the end of December. And so this is going to get $23. The eatery is our three-month meat haul that we do. I like to have at minimum $300 that we can spend. That, that's that been like a, a perfect number. And every month I'm giving it, I'm supposed to be giving it 55, but because it has a little bit of a buffer, I've reduced it to 50. Um, next is whole life. This is a new category and this is some whole life that I got for the kids I paid the premium for the entire year which I paid for my cushion and because I am I am that person who everything has a buffer <laughs> in some way or, or another so my monthly expenses when I was paying off my debt those credit card minimums I left in the monthly expenses amount just for situations like this. So the, I think uh, monthly, yes, monthly I need $21 to cover uh, next year's premium. So that's already covered in here. I don't have to make any changes. I don't have to add money or anything. I have it separate because I'm still debating if I am going to leave it in the bank or save for it in cash. I'm okay with it like it is, but at the same time, like the there's only like a thirty dollar buffer. This twenty one is eating up, you know, leaving it only with nine dollar buffer. And so for me, that's like it's taking me out of my comfort zone. So.
So I figured that out, but for now it's staying in the bank and it's included in the monthly expenses. We want to get these added up. So we have 190, 125, 25, 50, 23, and 50. So we have 496 towards bills. 463 towards bills. And so 463 from 977, 32. That leaves 514.32. We're gonna move on to the cash envelopes. Normally I write all of them, even if it's getting an amount or not. But this time I did not because I wanted to remind myself that I kind of made some changes for my cash envelopes. Bring the left amount over down here or leftover amount. So what I want to do, because it's the summer, is give the groceries a little more than normal. Because the kids are having meal prepping their lunch as well. We are trying to just use what we have in the freezer, what we have for sides. And before we start... A separate grocery shopping just for them to meal prep because I want them to do the whole entire thing plan it out go to the store buy the things you need come home meal prep it you know put it in the refrigerator so we've been doing that this past two weeks and you know definitely been working pretty good that's the reason I want to increase the grocery budget and also <laughs> It's like, because the stuff that they're eating, they're meal prepping, it's stuff that we use all the time. It's like we have it. So I really haven't had to increase my grocery. That's what I'm going towards. So um, groceries only got $5 increase. So from 40 to 45. Uh, car juice, I reduced from 60 to 50. And because lately... I haven't been spending as much. Like I still do my my thing where I fill up at half religiously. So that's keeping me within my budget. And I do that. Um, yes, and I, I think I said that I do do that weekly. And then dying out, I always stuff this at twenty five. What we don't use here in dining out, it rolls to our. Uh, travel vacation fund next is um fam jam and this is any things that the kids may need throughout the week and so what i did was the kids aren't spending this this um this can help out with the groceries depending on whatever they run out of or need we may just use this for groceries, so I can consider groceries having $65. So, I think I'm going to keep it separate for now. Just wanted to give you guys my ideas. And then, the other categories, I haven't been spending from anyway. Like, not like that. And then, they have a buffer. They have a buffer in the cash wallet. Um, like from rollover, so like I feel fine with not even stuffing them for the time being. And so with that, we have forty-five for groceries, fifty car juice or gas, twenty-five for dining out, and twenty, and we have a total of one forty for the cash envelopes. And I wanted to remind everyone that even though it says groceries is usually just food that I'm picking up it's like things that we forgot my weekly vegetables and fruits um you know like I <laughs> I like certain fresh fruit and um lettuce spinach that type of stuff so this is pretty much what I'm buying week to week 
and maybe something that's on sale, seasoning, whatever we we forgotten or ran out of. Um, so I don't want anybody to think this is like actually grocery shopping because we do. Uh, my boyfriend covers the groceries. We grocery shop every two weeks. Um, this has had been our rotation for, gosh, over five years. And with the help of the three months meat haul, it works. Like we, we figured that out for ourselves, even though with inflation and all that, we feel it, but it's still a minimum. We impact it minimally because of our system. Um, having that deep freezer has been, I, I feel from the beginning, I had my deep freezer since my kids was like toddlers. I think my daughter was two. My son wasn't even born. And yes, so they've grown up with a deep freezer and I kept it packed back then. And we upgraded this year to a freezer that's like, I want to say two and a half times the size of the deep freezer we had. And yeah, we still haven't filled it up. Definitely a huge help. So we're going to take 140 from the 514, 32. That leaves 374, 22. And now we can get into the sinking funds. Let's bring this amount, 374, 22. My wellness, that will be getting $23. Birthday's gift celebration is getting 21. And um, like this is one that I set a goal that for all of you know people that I buy gifts for, any type of graduation, celebration that pops up throughout the year, I set a goal at 500. And when I set my goals, I I'm paid 26 paychecks, paychecks a year. Being a bi weekly, get being paid bi weekly. Two of those are magic months. So I take the two magic months out of my math. So I divide 500 divided by 24 paychecks instead of 26, and I get the 21. So 20.8 rounded up to 21. And so that way, when I have my two months of magic months, they're truly free paychecks. I always um, increase, pay the bills as though I needed to, but I don't because everything is, even those are, you know, included. Yeah, um, but it's kind of helped me get ahead even more doing that I really like that once I was able to put my budgeting on paper it kind of allowed me to see things like okay well you can do this you can do this try this try that and it's been working and I know oh you're in the process of paying down debt it might not be an option but you know food for thought uh put it in your memory bank and See how that works for you, especially if you pay by weekly. And if you pay weekly, you can consider that. It will be instead of 52 weeks of pay, 50, and divide that by your goal amounts. And yeah. Next is Christmas. And Christmas is going to get 60. I am working to get this fully funded. At the beginning, by the beginning of August. And if you notice, school, school aid is no longer here because it's been fully funded. So I'm giving Christmas that extra that I was doing now that school aid has been funded, fully funded. Um, but we'll be starting that school aid back up in the next couple months. So I would like to be able to roll this amount to another category. To hopefully get that another one fully funded while I can. 
Uh, next is car defense. And this is just my car emergency fund for major repairs. And this is getting $53. I'm doing a 52 week challenge, taking the highest number and the lowest number. And it always equals 53. So that doesn't change. Home defense is the home emergency. And the goal is 500 and it's getting 21. And the purge kind of went over that earlier. It's getting a snowball amount of 31. And so for the sinking funds, we have 23, 21, 60, 53, 20. Well, we'll do 31, then 21. So we have 209 towards sinking funds. Okay, so 209 from 374.22. That leaves 165.22. And something's not right. Let me go ahead and double check my sinking funds. Okay, you guys, I did find my errors. I made some changes from a month ahead in wellness and I did not update it on my um, cheat sheet. So month ahead is going to get 21 instead of 25 and wellness is going to get 20 instead of 23. And so we need to subtract let's go ahead and erase this so it's 463 minus 4 so that's 459 459 minus 97732. It's 518, 32. So, route down to 518 minus 140. That's 378.22. We'll fix this here. And from 209, that was $3. Take away three, that's 206. So, 378.22 minus 206 leaves 172.22. And so now we can finish out this budget. Um, nothing to extra debt. Breaking down the 172.22. The zero out gets the last, oops, not 22, but 32. <laughs> the zero out gets the last three digits of my paycheck. So $7.32. And then new car. I decided that I'm going to no longer stuff it in cash and I'm going to give it prop money and that was 165. So, our total here should be 32 32 cents. And so 7 and 165 is 172. This matches what we what was left over and so we know that any number minus the same, the same number minus itself gives us zero. 
and I have a zero base budget. And I say so far, I like really, really love the zero base budgeting because it makes you take uh, whatever amount you have to work with and give it a job. Even if it's your buffer, even if the majority is in your buffer, you don't take it out the bank, you can do that. But you know where it's going. And since you know where it's going, you ain't, you don't have to wonder where it went. And so that for me, that peace of mind that this budgeting has, I feel like I can get that with any budgeting uh, method. Like I was um, considering doing like off to the side and, you know, out of sight, out of mind type of um, the 50, 30, 20 thing. Because if you think about it, if you take that number and half of it go towards your needs, you can make that, that happen in the bill section. Um, let's say the number is more than your 50%. You can adjust it and, you know, still make it work for you. So, but like maybe... Your goal is to get your bills under if it's not if it's over the fifty percent, get it under the fifty percent. But I was I was gonna use that as a, a measuring tool. But I know the way my bills and everything is set up, like my bills is probably like more like thirty or twenty percent and my savings and spending, you know, is the majority. Um Will probably be more like the fifty percent, but I I do want to total see what my percentages work out to be, just so I know I, I'm aware of if I'm how much of my pay is going towards my wants, needs, and future savings. Um, Zero based budgeting bomb dot com. I would never stop this. Even if I, I went cashless, this will always be in my life. <laughs> 100%. That is all I have for you guys. Thank you so much. And I will chat with you in the next video. Bye, guys.